Hey guys, so I hope you guys had a good day of trading today. Another tough day of trading. So this morning we had day one of JPile. Tomorrow's day two. Um, interesting enough is they released his like basically pre-recorded statement or pre-arranged statement um, early this morning around like I think it was about eight eight fifteen they released it. That's kind of different. Usually in the past, from what I can remember, they release that statement pretty much as soon as the event's supposed to start. So today it was supposed to start at 10 a.m. So I was more expecting the uh, obviously release at 10 a.m. So that was a little bit surprising seeing that pre-market. Uh, it definitely made the markets pretty bearish. Uh, as you see, we dropped here pre-market and then directly at open. From there, it honestly was just a straight chop fest. Um, not, not a whole lot of good trading pretty much happened from open until I would say really until 2 p.m. I would say that everything basically felt like a trap. Um, you know, if you look at your one minute, five minute and 15, everything was just kind of doing its own thing. Um, there were so many pushes or drops that really made no sense. Um, there was quite a few times, and I actually think that this was one of the most notable times at 12.30 right here, that we had the nice breakout. We had the nice double bottom. We put a demand in. We had a nice breakout. We back tested. We had closed over the 20 EMA. By all means, that was an extremely bullish move. So what I was expecting is right here to back test the five EMA, EMA support and then continue our push up. And the whole time, the five and 15 minute time frame, like the internals were saying, that's what we were going to do. However, until really we got down here about one o'clock, then it finally flipped too bearish. So it was very hard to get a good read, very hard to get a win. Uh, I definitely struggled again today. Another little red day for me um, is what it is. Tomorrow's Thursday. We have Friday still this week. See if we can turn it around a little bit. So going over here. So I posted the chart of my written TA, but um, these two-day events were with Jay Powell. Interestingly enough, um, and this will look at only SPY, um, of the last five times we've had these back-to-back -back day events, um, four out of five times, the first day, now five out of six times, the first day has opened red. However, five out of five times, the next day has opened green, actually. So that's really, really interesting to see that change of the trend. Uh, on QQQ, um, we actually have opened red three out of five times and uh, now four out of six times. And the second day has also opened green five out of five times. Now playing off of that, one could expect a green day tomorrow. However, there's a couple interesting things and some changes that I definitely uh, would note as bearish and why I personally did not swing calls. And I still like my swing calls on, Q, on the queues overnight. I think it was a good play. Um, obviously, I probably could have just closed it and open when it didn't go my way. But the hardest part about these j Powell days are you never know if you're going to get the $3 pump or you're going to get the $3 dump. It's just... It's really hard to tell um, what, what exactly the market's going to give you. So looking here, this is the first time since May 1st, uh, right here, May 1st through 4th, that SPY has closed three or more red days in a row. This is also the first time that SPY has closed a candle below or closed below the daily EMA since May 24th. Also, this is only the second time, I believe. Yes, the second time that SPY, so this would be the first time, and this is the second time now, that since uh, that since the beginning of March that we have had three or more red days in a row. So this is basically the second time this has happened in three and a half-ish months. So pretty notable. Um, so basically what we can look at here is from a bearish standpoint, we put our supply in here. We came down. And yesterday, again, I said I was bullish. We had a bounce off the daily AEMA. We were holding previous demand. So one would expect we should bounce up. However, what ended up happening was 
we now turn that demand into a resistance. So previous to this, I was bullish because we were holding demand, which you would expect with extreme bull momentum to not only, only hold the EMA, but also to hold the previous demand. Uh, but now that we're turning that into resistance, it actually does open up the downside potential. So if we would have a pretty red day tomorrow, the biggest area we would look for a bounce would be really this 429.8 area. Uh, really, since we rejected it here back in the beginning of June, we closed over it here on June 9th. Since then, we have not back tested 430 at all. Um, and obviously that was a major level to get through and more importantly, close over. So that would be the natural area that we would expect to come down to and back test if we are looking weak. Um, we are looking and still have not got a new demand. So really until we get that new demand on SPY, I would not be going long on calls. Um, and really, if you are going to try to go long before we get that demand, like kind of pre-run it, then really you're going to want to see a close over that 436.85 demand tomorrow. Going over to futures here, same thing. So obviously futures had the contract gap up. So on futures, we actually did close over the um, daily 8 EMA, but on SPY, we're under it. So you will see that difference. So we're holding the AEMA here. Uh, you can see we kind of did come down. We did lose this support that I was watching right here, this really 44.18 to um, 44.23 support. So from here, we basically have our last support right down here on the bull channel at 43.80. So if bears break through 43.80, that really could start off a bigger sell-off. Again, we usually see a gap fill on these um, contract rolls, so that would give us really 4,300 as a potential target. Um, but overall, we're still waiting for a new demand to get put, or yeah, new demand to get put in. So until we have that, we would should favor some downside. Looking at QQQ here, so same thing. I actually again was far more bullish on the Qs, mostly because of its extreme momentum. And the fact that it was bouncing off the AEMA um, and it had held this previous support here at 465.81. So what ended up actually happening is, again, just like SPY, we actually turned that into resistance. So turning that into resistance is actually pretty bearish. Now, this is actually the first time that the Qs have closed under the AEMA since June 7th, which was right here. And you see the next day, we basically didn't gap up but we moved up and that led to a new demand being put in on the 8th and that led to a huge breakout here so there is potential to see an immediate double bottom and move up which would then turn pretty much 362 area into a new demand um however something also interesting to keep in mind here is the queues have not since uh the may let's see right here in may uh, first through the fourth has not closed back to back candles below the AEMA. So we we have not seen that in almost a month and a half now, almost two months. So it'll be interesting to see if the bears can do that tomorrow. Um, another interesting thing to note here on the queues is that since the middle of February, right on that Valentine's area, the queues has only closed three or more red days two times. So this would now be the third time that that has happened. So very, very interesting to keep an eye on that trend for sure. Um, big support on this red bull line here is going to be at 357, really call it 358. Bulls can hold that when we can get our bounce. Um, and we also could see some support right here at 360.6. Realistically, the bulls are going to need to close at least over 365.8 to truly feel bullish for tomorrow or for, I mean, Friday. Going over to the VIX here, so the VIX is now completely back under the AEMA, um, and we actually saw our lowest level and our lowest close on the VIX since January 24th of 2020. So at this point, and I mentioned this kind of earlier this week, we are pretty much looking to see um, a drop into the 12s. I mean, we're 19, 20 cents if you want to see the 12s away from seeing the 12s for the first time in three and a half years, basically. Um, 
Another oddity, again, is if you look in, you see VIX closed down negative 4.9%. And what did SPY do? SPY closed red. This is now the fifth time in the last seven trading days that SPY and the VIX has closed in the same direction. Now, again, there is nothing stating in stone that if SPY is red, the VIX has to be green. However, historically speaking, if you look back at basically the history of the VIX and SPY, that's generally the normal thing that we see. And to see them closing the same direction is not normal, nor is it really to be expected. So there's definitely some oddities happening. Um, and I'm definitely struggling trading as I do rely on the VIX um, for some of my entries. And I do believe also with, and I noticed this a lot today, um, especially on puts. I mean, generally speaking, puts should always pay better than calls. Why? Because generally on puts, you get the pumping of the premium due to the VIX rising, which causes obviously usually IV to rise. Um, and then that makes your premium more expensive and then you win, win quicker and better. However, what we're seeing because the VIX is dropping as we are dropping on SPY, there are numerous times that contracts just are not paying out. I mean, for instance, today, I know there was quite a few times, I almost think every single play I entered, whether it was green or red, um, that I saw a ton of, basically you would enter, let's say a call and SPY would move up and you would not gain value. So obviously, you know, that's, there's a lot of things that go into it, whether it's zero DT, in the money, at the money, out of the money, stuff like that. But generally speaking, if you are at the money, which is usually what I trade, and whether I'm zero or one DTE, if you enter and it pretty much immediately moves in your direction, 10 to 20 cents, you should expect to see a decent reward. I mean, you should expect to at least be green. However, there was numerous times today that I entered and I immediately lost value or spy would go up like 20 cents uh and that was this was a big thing right during um this time period during here i mean you have these moves up and wicks down and stuff like that but you would see a move up of like 20 cents on spy and you would be break even or in the red so it was very hard to win today and i noticed it a lot too on the plays that i did win on um my wins were super small i mean my average win today was probably about six percent um, obviously when you have a stop loss of negative 10 to negative 15%, that ain't going to cut it. Um, so I definitely had that as a, a big struggle today. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously call, you know, puts and calls, it just was just definitely a struggle today. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I still have hope in the market. You know, I think something to keep in mind, um, and I'm a little more long winded on these dailies cause I'm just kind of, um, throwing it all out there for you guys and kind of just spitballing. Um, but keep in mind that there's always going to be another trading day and there's always going to be time periods. And this is something that I always have to keep in mind when I go from, I think I have 12 red green weeks in a row. And now I'm looking at my first red week in almost three months, four months. Um, there's always going to be time periods where things are not going to make sense, where you're going to have a strategy that works in most markets, but not in every market. So right now, I mean, from a technical standpoint and from a day trading standpoint for somebody that pretty much uses technicals as confirmation, and I read a ton of price action for my entries, um, somebody that's had, I've had very, very high success with that, when price action doesn't make sense and premiums aren't paying out that makes sense, and the VIX is opposing the normal movement it does. And even things like Vold are doing oddities, which I will say today though, Vold was pretty on point. And I actually was a little refreshed by the fact that Vold seemed to be more, um, make more sense at least. Um, but there's always gonna be periods of drawdown. But the biggest thing to keep in mind is to never let the periods of drawdown outweigh um, the periods of the good. So, I mean, right now I'm pretty red on the week. Um, I, I'm down about my weekly profit goal. So obviously that's a big red week, 
But, you know, if you look at the last 12 weeks of trading, I've had so many green weeks and high profit weeks that this is just a blink. This is just a blip in the in the year of trading. So keep your heads up. Things will get better. There was, is going to be a time where SPY and all the technicals and all the weird oddities are going to reconcile and things are going to look better. So save your money. Capital preservation is what I've been saying since beginning of 2022 when we knew we were going to a bear market, basically, is to preserve your capital. There is going to be a better, true bull market where it's going to be on easy mode. And there's going to be days where it's on easy mode, like kind of like what we saw the last couple of weeks, really, where it just goes up. Um, those are the days we make a bunch of money. The days that we struggle, we try to keep it to a small loss. So the days that are good, we cannot weigh the bad. All right, hope you guys have a good night. I will see you guys tomorrow.